Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Medieval Reader. So today I am doing my first book chat on the Odyssey by Homer, translated from the ancient Greek by Robert Fagels. Now this was a book that was assigned for one of my courses on hospitality this semester. I'd read it before in uh, high school, actually it was my first year of high school when I read it. And I think I missed so much of it. I mean, I knew the basic storyline going into my reread, but I didn't pick up on all of the um, references to hospitality, on some of the questions that this book is dealing with, and I was surprised by how violent this book can be. Um, I don't recall reading all of this violence the first time. Maybe I skipped it over, or maybe I didn't read all of the chapters. Maybe we skipped it, I don't know. Um, but. Anyway, um, I'm going to assume that you already know what the story is about because I really feel like book two can be great to actually have a discussion about a book that we've read. And I feel like doing a book chat on the Odyssey because a number of people, I assume, have read the story or at least know the storyline. So you're now warned, there are spoilers in this video. Um, but brief summary first. Uh, Odysseus fought in the Trojan War, he defeated the Trojans, he helped defeat the Trojans, he is this very wily, cunning warrior, um, he's a king, and he has a son named Telemachus, and a wife named um, Penelope. And Penelope has remained home, um, and is being courted by a number of suitors, who believe that Odysseus has died, or at least they've convinced themselves that Odysseus has died. And these suitors are really irreverent, disrespectful, um, Penelope has tried to find a way to ward them off by pretending that she is weaving a shroud for um, Odysseus's father, uh, who so that when he dies he has a shroud, but she unravels it every night. Where is Odysseus after the war? Well, Odysseus is, has been stranded in a number of islands because he and his men outraged Poseidon. Um, Poseidon, uh, in book nine, Polyphemus, who is a cyclops, um, starts eating Odysseus's men. And so Odysseus basically tricks Polyphemus by giving him a bunch of wine and then poking his eye out. And um, he says that his name is nobody to trick Polyphemus so that when Polyphemus asks for help, he can say, well, nobody hurt me, which is funny. But then in the end, he shows this great amount of hubris and says that no, it's Odysseus, son of Laertes, who has done this to you, and not even your earthquake god father, who is um, Poseidon, will be able to heal your eye. So, so then Polyphemus calls out to his father, and um, Poseidon makes their life miserable, and then they eat um, cows that belong to uh, Helios, who is the sun god, and they're not supposed to do that. And along the way, Athena is on Odysseus' side, and Athena helps Odysseus return to Ithaca, avenge the mistreatment of uh, his wife and just the destruction of his home. Um, and it, that is where the, all the violence is. I mean, all the people are completely slaughtered. And in the very end, um, Athena gets uh, permission from Zeus to bring about peace between everybody. Um, so now I want to really talk about some of the things that stood out to me. So the first thing that stood out to me was this question of the role of the gods in the story. Um, gods who disguise themselves as, um, you know, visitors. Uh, for example, Athena, who disguises herself as Mentes, a king himself and a sailor. And um, the whole time she's actually disguised. So while Telemachus and Odysseus have a feeling, like they kind of know that it's Athena, like they, they don't never ever know for sure um, because she never reveals herself as Athena. In the beginning, Zeus says, why should I help Odysseus? I mean, he, he got what he deserved, humans get what they deserve. Um, and yet at the same time, there's always this question of fate and, um, you know, humans cannot, even with the help of the gods, escape their fate. Uh, and even in the end, when Odysseus defeats all of these suitors, he would never have been able to do it if it weren't for the help of Athena. 
she's the one who um, prevents the suitors from killing him. So is Odysseus really this mighty warrior if he's getting all of this help from a goddess? Um, and that make you know that was the thing that really bothered me. I think the most is that Odysseus himself is quite wily. He profits from a number of different situations to benefit himself, um, and yet Athena chooses to side with him. And I'm not saying that the suitors are great people. I mean they're not. It's just he has no mercy on any of them, um, even the ones who ask him for mercy. Um, and I feel like even in some of the medieval courtly stories that come obviously much, 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 much later, um, whenever a bad guy asks for mercy, you're like supposed to show mercy, but Odysseus doesn't show mercy at all. Um, and it is just really interesting to, you know, to see the code uh, for warriors expressed in this work. Um, the question of hospitality is really interesting because um, Odysseus will disguise himself as an old man with the help of Athena. Athena disguises herself as Mentes. Um, Telemachus will, is, you know, nobody asks a stranger questions, or at least nobody is supposed to ask a stranger questions until after he is received and given this grand reception. Uh, so when Telemachus is at Menelaus's, there's some feeling that, you know, he might be related to Zeus, and Zeus being the god of hospitality, they feel like, oh yeah, we should probably give hus show how hospitality to Telemachus. So humans are being mistaken for gods, and gods are being mistaken for humans. So there's all these disguises, there's all of these people tricking each other, so Penelope will lie to the suitors so that she won't have to marry any of the suitors. Um, it's funny because the only people who are actually honest are the suitors, but they're also really horrible. Um, so, I mean, if honesty means, you know, ha showing everyone who you really are and, and being straightforward, um, yeah, the suitors are very honest about the way they feel about the gods, about the way they feel about um, Odysseus and his son. And so, yeah, the honesty doesn't get you very far. Uh, perhaps if you're really bad, um, but I thought that was interesting. This translation is a wonderful translation. Um, I don't, I haven't compared it to other translations, but Robert Fagel's is, is essentially the definitive translation of the Odyssey into English. Um, it flowed very well. Um, there is an audiobook version narrated by Ian McKellen. I listened to part partially because um, Sometimes I get tired of reading and I need to listen. Um, and, and he's just a great narrator. I think he's the one who played Gandalf in The Lord of the Rings, is what I've been told. I don't know actors very well. Um, this was this was a really great book. Um, ultimately, I gave it four out of five stars. I think just because I had some difficulties really feeling incomplete support of Odysseus because of all the help he received from Athena and because I just felt like he was slightly unfair to the suitors. I don't know. It, it is just the discomfort that I felt. Um, but really, I mean, it's, it's hard. It's almost impossible to rate these kind of works. Um, they're just such important cultural pieces. Um, and, and it's just, it was wonderful to have read it. It was just a lot of fun. It's one of those books that every um, high school or college student should be forced to read. Um, because it is fun and and they would enjoy it and they wouldn't feel like they're you know laboring to read it because it is really really enjoyable and those are my thoughts um let me know what you thought about the odyssey what are some elements that jumped out at you um were there things that you didn't like um and if you are a classic student in particular i'm sure you have a lot more background knowledge about these the Mediterranean world in which Odysseus lived. So, so you know, let me know um, what your experience was reading the Odyssey. But I hope to do more of these book chats, um, and I'm really, really interested in knowing your thoughts. I hope you guys all have a good day. Bye now.